Haven't heard that sound in a minute. You know, it's crazy how much louder the MT-09 sounds. Man, dude, look. This is how long it's been since I rode this bike. I got freaking all this pollen. I mean, granted, everything that I own has pollen on it now, but it's over everything. Oh, man. There's your daily 100, baby. <laughs> Whew, that came up quick. Dang, this bike is so much faster than the MT-09. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, I know it is, but it still surprises me. It's been so long since I rode it. Man, that's the problem with having so many bikes. Whew, baby. Having so many bikes, I even having a channel where my whole shtick is that I ride motorcycles. I don't have enough time to give every single motorcycle the love that it deserves. I've also just been finding that simplifying things in my life makes me so much happier than just having abundance of stuff. I know that's like, and I don't mean that to come across like a humble brag. As most of you guys know, we're moving back to Texas and uh, you know, we, we came out here, we're renting a house rather than buying. By the way, we're in Atlanta, Georgia, if you're new to the channel. Basically built my channel in Austin, Texas. I lived in Austin for 10 years and now moved out here to Atlanta. And launch, right? Launch time? Anyways, we came out here, we rented a house, and it's like so much bigger than the house that we were in before, just because like, for the money, that's what we could get, and you know, it just happened to be, we weren't specifically looking for a bigger house, we were mainly looking for a yard with a fence in like a general area that we wanted to be. And we ended up finding a house that was just way bigger than the house that we owned back in Austin. And it's just like so much unnecessary space. Well, one room I've been using for the build, just because, you know, I could. The garage is smaller than the one that we had in Austin and uh, I had an extra room. So I built a bike inside the house, which is, you know, cool. <laughs> and then another room, uh, no, two other rooms. Okay, so three rooms are just like not being used. One is for building a bike, and two are just straight up storage. We're like, well, we don't feel like unpacking this stuff just yet, so we have a bunch of unpacked stuff in two rooms of the house. And then the master bedroom is like the size of a house itself. It's so big. I wanna say the house is like 3,000 square feet, and we only use half that, barely. So anyways, we're moving back to Austin, and uh, we're buying a new house. And it's about that. It's about half the square footage of the house that we have here, just because we, we don't want that much space. It brings us no happiness. If anything, it's more stress. The more you gotta deal with, the more stress there is. And that's kind of how we've been feeling with motorcycles as well. Like there, there's a caveat to this, but right now I have six motorcycles. I have the R6, I have my CRF, I have the MT-09, I have my Ruckus, I have the Grom, and then I have the CB300F. Now, the caveat. The CB300F was just a donor bike for parts. So really, that doesn't really count. All that stuff will be going into the Grom. The Grom is getting given away, so that's not really even mine. I mean, it is mine, but I'm giving it away, so it won't be mine. So really, there's, there's four personal bikes that I have, and that's just more than I need. Back when it was just me, my R1, and my WR, I was so happy. I could give both those bikes all the love they deserved. By the way, one of the things I'm gonna miss about living where we do, you guys probably can't see it, but there's a, maybe you guys can see it, there's a cargo plane up there right now. There's some some military base, base <laughs> some military base close by. 
And uh, so the military planes and helicopters fly over the house like every single day. And uh, I don't know, it's kind of cool. You always hear them. Aylin, uh, my daughter, she's almost two. And she gets so excited, she's like, plane! And then she imitates a plane. It's like the cutest thing you'll, you'll ever see. But, I don't know, I kind of like that. But anyways, I'm not saying that I only want two bikes, but I don't need four. I was never planning on indefinitely owning four. It's just kind of where I was right now. I really wanted to get a new personal bike, so that's why I got the MT-09. But I didn't want to get rid of the R6 just yet. But I did want to eventually replace it. And if you guys have been following me across the web, Twitter, Instagram, by the way, you should follow me, at Motonocity. I've been mentioning it here and there, maybe even on the channel, I don't know. Why is there so much construction? It's ridiculous. daily 100 for you but yeah i've been mentioning here and there that i'm i'm planning on uh, parting ways with the r6 soon and it, it's kind of time i always said that i wanted to get back on a leader bike back when i sold my r1 i told you guys that i would be back on a leader bike eventually but the r6 was kind of you know just a a, a love of mine a, a nostalgia bike if you didn't know i used to have an r6 uh, it was the second bike that I ever owned. It was a 2009 Raven Edition, and uh, it was stolen. I had it four months, and then it was stolen. And after that, I bought the R1. And I always wanted to have another R6 just because I, I really liked that bike. That's part of the reason why. <laughs> Granted, the R1 is faster, but I don't know. There's just something about the R the the 600 sound. I really like it. I always said that I wanted to have another R6 after that. And when they announced the new generation, um, starting in 2017, I knew I had to have that bike. So I bought it. And it's been this is crazy. It's been two years now. Two years since I bought this bike. Almost to the day. Uh, I think next week it'll be two. Um, it'll be two years since I bought this bike. And interestingly enough, six years almost to the day that I uh, have my R6 stolen. Funny how that works out, but I'm ready to step up to something new. And uh, you guys know I'm really interested in uh, the new S1000RR from BMW. Back when, uh, oh man, so Abby and I, when we got married, one of the places we went to on our honeymoon was Germany, and we went to the BMW Museum. Uh, saw all the, of course you see all the cars and stuff, but they got all their bikes too. You know, I always liked S1000s already, but man, see, that was the first time that I ever really saw all those um, bikes in person, and they had an HP4 there. Not the, not the new generation HP4, but the previous one. And man, when I first saw that thing, I fell in love with it. That was like my first dream bike, was the HP4. And then they came out with the slightly redesigned version in uh, I think 2015. It was just a cosmetic, mainly cosmetic change. I think they also might have changed the uh, the computer too. I love that thing. That was definitely a dream bike of mine. And then, and then you guys know the, the Ducati um, 1299S Anniversario Edition. That was my next dream bike after the uh, the HP4 slash S1000RR. And then BMW announced the, the new generation S1000. And you know, some people love the look, some people hate the look, which is funny because on the current generation, they've got the asymmetrical lights and uh, a lot of people are like, this looks stupid. You need to change it. They should look the same. And now they're going to be changing it with the new ones. And it uh, <laughs> now everyone's like, that was the defining look. Why are you changing it? But I love it. I think uh, the bike is magnificent. When they announced it, I knew that that had to be my next leader bike. If you watch uh, Baron Von Grumble or 44 Teeth, the company that Baron Von Grumble started, they do a lot of uh, like reviews and stuff like that for bikes. And he's been able to get a lot of a lot of seat time on the new S1000 and he has been raving about it. Even more so than any of the other new bikes for 2019, which is just pretty crazy. Cause of course you got the V4R coming out this year as well, or rather it just came out. You know, that kind of just like sealed the deal. So that's part of the reason that uh, I'm selling the R6. I knew like the time was gonna come. I didn't want to keep this bike forever and ever and ever. I don't have a need to have two super sports. So yeah, so I just want to get myself in a position to, uh, 
get the S1000. So soon, whenever it may be, sometime in the next few months, I'd like to sell the R6. So if the right person, if one of you guys is like super interested in this bike and uh, has the right price in mind, I'd be willing to let this thing go in the next couple weeks before we move, but I'm not in a rush to sell. Just like with all my bikes, I don't rush into a sale. You know, I put it up for the price that I want and uh, I wait because I'm not in a rush. I don't need to sell things. If you're looking uh, to get this thing for an absolute steal, I'm sorry to break it to you, it's just not gonna happen. Woo! It would be nice to see this thing go to a subscriber though. My R1 went to a subscriber, you guys know that because I've gotten to ride it since I sold it, so, sold, <laughs> stole it. <laughs> I've gotten to ride it since I sold it. So that's been really cool. Before I get rid of this thing, there's a few other things that I wanted to take care of. Um, you guys know the uh, the battery drain issue that I had because the uh, the RGB LEDs that I put on. The guy that makes those, he has a new controller that doesn't have the battery uh, draw. I've just been dropping the ball on getting that thing swapped in. He's had that thing for over a year, the new controller. So I'm gonna get that uh, replaced soon. Then there's, there's not gonna be any sort of electrical problem. I still wanna do the wheels. Um, I'm not gonna be powder coating them, but I do have something in the plans. Just because I wanted to complete the look with the new fairings, and I haven't done that yet, so. But yeah, I'm selling the R6. If you're interested, let me know. My price will still be competitive with you know, what's on the market and what this bike is. But I remember back when I uh, sold my R1, I had people messaging me wanting to buy it for like four or five grand. And I just didn't even bother replying to people like that, so. But I am gonna miss this bike. I, I love it a lot. I wouldn't say that I had the same connection to it that I did with my R1, but this has been a, you know, a big part of my channel. I, I've gotten, oh man, I've got two of my, it's kind of funny, two of my most viewed videos on my channel are on this bike, and they're currently like neck and neck competing with each other, approaching a million views. But the funny thing about it is one is me racing Hunter on, on this bike, and uh, the other one is me racing fry riding on this bike. And they both have almost the same number of views. And I just, I don't know, it's kind of funny. Me racing two of my best friends <laughs> on, this, on the same bike, so. I know it's been like five or six days since the last video. Um, we actually close on our house in Austin tomorrow. I fly out to Austin early, early, early morning. We're gonna be in Austin soon. And I'm talking like real soon. The plan is to be in Austin in like uh, two and a half weeks. If you wanna meet up with me before I leave Atlanta, make sure that you subscribe to my email list. I'll put a link to it down in the description because I'll be announcing the uh, meetup date and location on my email list. Again, you gotta be subscribed to that if you wanna come uh, come meet up with me. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subbed yet so you guys can get notified of all the videos I got coming out and uh, you know, find out what bike I'm gonna get and when I get it. <laughs> Although I haven't really been uh, too too secretive with that. But that's gonna be it. You guys have been awesome. I've been Modenosity. Remember life's better with horsepower. Keep life lived. And I'll see you guys in the next one.